Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Talking Shit About Fitness. I'm Greg the Devil Dog Moya. To my right is BK Comic Coach Kohler. To my left is Dilton the Tech Garcia. Today we're going to speak about mindset, mental toughness. We're going to talk about the water pollution qualifiers and several other things on the agenda. So, mindset, mental toughness. A lot of people, you know, this is like the main focus, whether it's in fitness, CrossFit, career, school. A lot of people are speaking about mindset, mindset, mindset. We want to talk about how we're going to turn mindset, you know, and negative situations into a positive situation. Like what I just spoke about in the monologue, Chesty Fuller was one of the greatest Marines, in the, and what he spoke about is he turned the negative situation, you are surrounded, eight to one, uh, eight, eight men to one, uh, and turn it into a positive situation and be like, hey, listen, we're surrounded, we're going to shoot in every direction, we're going to hit those fuckers from every direction possible, so we're not going to miss. So basically, he was, he was putting the mindset in his men, turning a negative situation into a positive and giving them a, a positive mindset, let's attack. Guess what? They came out winning because also at the same time, they had mental toughness. Obviously, that's not only for Marines, but that's also for us and, you know, and not only other military branches. It's, you have to have that mental toughness. In, in society today, you know, I keep on seeing through, we keep on seeing through social media, oh, mindset is everything, mindset, mindset. But what happens is, you don't have mental toughness, that mindset is gone. You cannot let things rattle. How can we put this talking about in CrossFit, bodybuilding, powerlifting, Olympic weightlifting, gymnastics, and life in general. And in life in general, exactly. I mean, here in my business, you know, at the box, I've had situations where people quit. That's not going to rattle me. i got to have a positive mindset and keep moving. Hey, my business my business. They want to leave, they want to leave. Okay, let's go. i gotta, I got to worry about the people that want to stay. You know, if, if, like, I've had, you know, I've been dealing since from the last competition with a little bicep injury, and my mindset's been like, okay, I can either stop training completely or just keep going and try to work around it. And that's what I've been trying to work, do, deal with it. Has the mindset and mental toughness to working around it. Anything? No, I mean, just pushing through it, and, and it's not just, uh, like you said, I mean, I was saying, it's not just about, you know, in the gym, it's how you view everything, and how you, uh, like, you can use, I mean, the same thing, you can use it in your job, in your life, in your different situations, you know, you gotta take what you can and just keep moving forward, and, you know, no matter how you get hit, it's, I think one of the greatest, uh, it was a, I'm a big movie freak, so, and, I was at Rocky, one of the Rocky movies, and it's not about you, life is not about how you get hit, it's about getting back up, and just, oh, that was that was probably yeah, Rocky Balboa. That was Balboa, yeah. And it, it's about how you, it's not how you get hit. You have to always keep get, getting get up and keep moving forward. And you remember the little song today? You grew over the couple yeah. last three little couple weeks. Yeah, that's a big point. So I, I agree with that. Um, as far as even just taking a step back to learn more, or right. taking a step back to to get stronger in certain positions, to, to be better in the future. So it is. It's the mindset to see the future or to set a goal for the future, but the, the toughness is, is enduring whatever it takes to get there. And it is. Whether it rattles you or it, or it excites you, the toughness is, is both. And you should be able to deal with the excitement and be able to control it, or you should be able to deal with you know, that, that whatever bothers you or may have you know, thrown a wrench in the game plan, you should still be able to come out of that. Move forward. To well, your, I mean, to your well, that's where you know, like, uh, focus. You know, you and we something we say in the Marine Corps, um, adapt and overcome. You got to learn what that. You know, that's something in overcoming. For example, I'm going to bring something back from my old sport, tennis. The 1989 French Open. Uh, a young American, 17 years old, Michael Chang, quarterfinals was down two sets to love against Ivan Lendl. I'll never forget this match, I was a kid. And he was cramping, cramping up bad. And he was on the verge of losing the match. He hit 
an underhand serve which you never see in tennis, like ever. And it rattled Ivan Lendl. Ivan Lendl was one of the greatest players to play the sport of tennis. And it rattled him. And this guy is from Czechoslovakia at the time, before he became Czech Republic, one of the mentally strongest, fittest players on the pro tour, got beat by a 17 year old in five sets. Not only did Michael Chang come back, tied it up two sets to all, won the match, won the French Open, two days, four days later, a 17 year old. Meaning that all these kids coming, you know, from sports from a young age like golf, tennis, um, gymnastics, they're already taught a mindset or a mental toughness to stay focused. Well, yes, some adults can't even do that. How is that possible? Obviously, you know, that's part of training, sports psychologists, like we spoke in our last, last podcast, you know, we talk, you know, mental, you know, uh, yeah, for psychologists, it, it takes a lot. And it's not about coming in here and, oh, I'm going to snatch 225 for reps. No, you've got to come in with a mindset, but also have something that I would talk about, visualization. And this is crazy, but I've been doing this visualization since I was a kid playing tennis. My dad would come into my room and be like, what are you doing? I go, I'm playing a tennis match. I'll get yourself, I go, yes, I'm visualizing. And the thing is, whether you're doing snatches, cleaning jerks, or even if you're doing a wad, you got to visualize that you're doing that it correctly, it's not just doing it. You want to visualize that you're hitting your numbers, you're hitting your reps. Uh, just like in tennis when they taught us, visualize hitting your shot, you're, if you're returning the ball, hitting it down the line, hitting it cross court. Um, my dad even taught me the same thing with shooting when I was shooting in the Marine Corps. He goes, take that breath in, um, take, breathe out, squeeze the trigger like, a, like an orange, you know, and those are a lot of things that I actually still live to this day and use because my dad was a competitive shooter not only and a sniper, so at the end of the day, what more patience on breathing techniques is that? Martial arts also help me with um, breathing techniques, meditating. A lot of people don't know how to, there's so many breathing techniques that will help you focus, clear your mind, you know, and that's, meditation is one of the biggest things. And mental toughness is a big Yeah. I think one of the muscles that everybody forgets to work on is out the brain. And they just come in, yeah, but, you also gotta work on and breathe. You have to work. You have to work on focus. Yes. Correct. Yeah. You have to focus. Ninety-nine percent. Well, <laughs> well, depending. I mean, when you're sleeping, some people <laughs> snore. They, 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 they need that seat. Sleep apnea. Yeah. And, and um, people forget. It. Forget the brain is one of the important. Like, if your brain is focused, your body will follow. I mean, like, I love working out with people, but there's sometimes that I like training by myself because it's my zen. Where I don't like if I train with people, okay, you guys better know what the fuck you're doing. Uh, I don't, I, I don't mind helping people out, but you want to train with me, and I'm not trying to be egotistical or anything like that. You want to work out with me, okay? Stop being shit. Let's get to work. Okay? You, you know, you're the same way. You actually sometimes have to push me because I'm still half, half asleep when you get here. And oh uh, yeah, like I'm, I'm done eating and I'm like. No, no, he tries to eat. Okay, no, I'll do it today. <laughs> <laughs> or that. That's my point. That's my point. Wait till after the <laughs> Okay. It actually happened one time at Drew. That. No, um, I, 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 and I can relate to that because when I would go to like a regular gym, I would try to work out with somebody, and I'm ready. I'm focused to hit, hit the gym and just walk out. But then you have some people that just, they go out, talk to everybody, say hi to everybody, and then dude, we gotta work out. Let's hit this and let's work out. And, it's, and that's like, you know what, I'm work, I'd rather work out Like myself. Friday, we did a quick workout of strict presses and strict handstand pushups, five by five. Strict, strict, in and out. Then we did some bicep curls. Yes. Uh, hammer, hammer curls. Hammer curls. We were in and out in 30 minutes, 30, 35 yeah. minutes. We talked, but we were getting, 
we were, it was in and out. Nobody showed up for 7 p.m. I'm like, hey, let's, let's do something. Boom. And we were in and out in 30 minutes. Yeah. And it was a quick, easy shoulder arm workout and working on skills, gymnastics, but that's, that's us. But we have that, that's good initiative. I guess working out in different atmospheres too, in yes. environments. You said with the music or working out by yourself, different types of music, not having music. Sometimes I would have those the headset all build, on. Those all yeah. help build on Correct. my toughness. It's something that I, I posted on Instagram about a while ago, a couple weeks ago, it was like, it was raining outside. And like all of a sudden, like, everybody's workout was like completely different. Oh my God, because it's raining. What does that have to do? It rains every single day. And, and yeah. oh, I make him run outside. I make him do sled. The weather yeah. is a condition that like, you have to you're afraid of the weather change. Like, what, what was it, 2016, the rainy possible? Guadalpalooza? How's that possible? Oh, yeah. Even what, so, Guadalpalooza, yeah. 2016. And you got to work out, whatever. I mean, Chattel had to swim in, in the rain. It was in the, in the bay, a bay site. So she did like, that year? Those are things that can rattle yeah. you. But if, if you're not willing to, to go and, and take that step, then you're never going to grow ever. Well, that's direction. the year that they had the floating. Uh, yeah, the uh, barge. The barge. They had that jump push up with the deadlifts. <laughs> well, that day, I think, remember they started to rain and nobody wanted it. I was only over. Like, but that was the year that it rained, rain. Yeah. Like, that was a lot It rained rain. Friday. It the rained Friday, it Saturday. Rain. And then it rained Sunday. It fucking rained. The year that it poured was like. 2015 or something? No. 2015 yeah. didn't rain because that's when I competed at the OC Throwdown. That shit, I was walking around that water without a shirt. 2016, the year that Rich competed. Uh, yeah, and it was that shit. <laughs> that was <bad. laughs> They didn't have no tents. I had nothing my, there. I, had, I went in with they white there, handles. I think they had to run and buy ponchos or something because they didn't even have anything for them yet. And then Where? everybody all of a sudden had ponchos. <clears throat> and then we started building tents. Out of uh, barbells, we, we we put the plates, we put the barbells up, and then we put a tarp over top. Like of a TV. Oh my god! Like, <laughs> like that. Yeah, we're really. holding it down <laughs> with the wind. Yeah. It was, oh wow. It was nuts. Man. We spent most like, of the time in the It was, it was uh, adapt and conquer. Like, yeah, you had to. Fuck yeah. that! It was raining. We were out there no matter what. Like, yeah. where were we gonna run to? Our fucking cars were like miles away. We started building shit, dude. Like, yeah. You got to die. Let's go, dude. Whoa. What was it, two years ago at the CrossFit Games? You know, you're thinking July, it's gonna be nice in summer. They had to do the obstacle course. Yeah. And it's cold. Cold. They told them they all had sweaters on and they told right them. Right before going, everybody And they said, oh, no, you gotta take off your sweaters. I've never seen that. Yeah. yeah. And you see uh, Josh Bridges say something like, I'm used to the cold, yeah. somebody give me a hug. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he was actually standing there like, saying some shit like yeah. it's warm or something. He's like, yeah, it's warm out here. Yeah. I remember something like yeah. that. Yeah, and then you Mental see Sarah, Sarah, Sig yeah. Sarah, Sig yeah. Sarah Sigmund's daughter, like, shit, they're, they were all freezing. Like, I mean, yeah, it you was. You see their teeth chattering. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, in Wisconsin, I mean, obviously it's Canada, but there was a cold front coming. It rained the day before. Yeah, so it's like, wow. But then you have to perform. Yeah. You know that once you're there, oh, hey, your turn. Okay. It's your yeah, turn. The, the logs were slippery. It wasn't the same track. And that's like even in the Olympics. Like, I've watched Olympic sprinting in the fucking rain. Like, they don't stop. Really? What the fuck you yeah. doing? We're going to cancel this for next week? Yeah. No, do your fucking running. I mean, now. I've had. <laughs> if you can't run, then you're out. Yeah, I've somebody had, else is going to run. Somebody's going to yeah. run. I've had members tell me it'll be raining. I stop it if it's thunder and light, obviously. Yeah. I'm not going to push up. But I, oh, I, I can't get wet. I'm going to get sick. Nah. I go, listen, you're not going to get sick of rain because you're going to go home, take a shower, and chill in your AC. Nah, the nah. air conditioner is what's going to get you. get sick because you're dying. Yeah, I think that you had that wad that I, was, I think I was the only one running. And I had one of my best times. She oh, yeah, you ran. <laughs> you started, but then you started doing the, the burpees. What? No, no, something yeah, comes with no, no, yeah. no, 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 because the thing is, no, because uh, it started lightning, and I told everybody, yo, and it was, and it was bad, but I kept on running, I didn't care, like, you know what, no. and I feel like my body would just cool down, her, my, I didn't stop running, I just kept on, I'm like, okay, her, last year, the year, yeah. last year, the year before, she had to do Murph by herself, or with a group of people at night, 
and the rain caught her in the second mile, right? No, the first mile. First mile. She came back. And they took, she took off, it was nice, and all of a sudden, well, yeah, no, those are all not so tough. Exactly. Scenario, yes. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I remember Guadalupe's 2015. Uh, it was cold as fuck. No, 2014. It was my first all rights competition, which was Wadapalooza, and it was cold. I think Cindy did it with Sita uh, and and Gabby and Vicky. Vicky yeah, too. and even Joey did it too. Like this, yeah, Joey was out there because he, he took Hyrule's spot. Yeah, I was gonna say I think Joey took somebody's spot. Yeah, he yeah. took Hyrule because Hyrule got wrapped up from the competition the week before. From uh, Sunshine Classic. Sunshine. No, it was at the same place, but Sunshine Classic. And, like, the Sunshine Classic, which was on the same location as the uh, Crush Games. That was at Chopper Park. Yeah, because oh, okay. the Crush Games got moved over to the BB&T Center, yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah, that was nice. Yeah, indoors, no food sold, whatever. But now it's another mental toughness. Like, you're going now from training inside a fucking 100 degree gym to an air conditioned yeah. arena. Where it's See, uh, you can't control that at all. Like you can't open the ice hockey arena. Ice hockey arena. Yeah, like, that's look perfect example. Uh, and people were complaining about it. Yeah, oh, you yeah. can hear them. They were walking around the stands, and everybody was like, "Oh, it's so cold in here. This is crazy. I don't know why they would do this." It, it, so imagine if yes. these are going through their mind. Yep. Look, they perfect. weren't focused on uh, my workout's coming, and I need to fucking get my rep scheme down. Yeah. And they were like, "I'm cold." Perfect so, example. So, um, Big Nation Thunderdome, FS Thunderdome, it used to be called, it used to be at the Germain Arena, which is now I think called the Hertz Arena. It's an ice hockey rink. Yeah. And I remember the first year I competed, it was freezing. I was like, shit. But guess what? I like it. Because once you start doing it, you, you don't feel cold. Yeah. Now, depending on the event, now, depending. Yeah. 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 Now, depending also where you're at on the floor, because the the more open the floor is, the more colder you're gonna get because especially down the middle because that's where there's most of the AC, the cold air, even though it's coming from the bottom to freeze the ice. But How there's was the, the other one? The, the one in Punta Gorda? The yeah. That was indoors, it was cold. It was, it was cold, but yeah, it was not bad. Yeah, but it was more intimate. It, yes. it, it, I think the most when people got in and they, the temperature kind of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, because no, it was smaller. It wasn't yeah, because like we went in, we went in when they were setting up, and I'm like, wow, it's a little bit cold. Yeah. But then when we went in there, while everybody was in there, it was packed. Once the stands got filled, yeah, everything. Like, you didn't feel it. Like I, there was one event that really got to me, which was the rowing event. Was it the rowing event? Rowing lunges and handstand push-ups. Yes. That one you felt the cold because, especially with the handstand push-up thing against the wall. Away oh, okay. from everybody, you kind of feel that cold air, as, and then you're coming back from the lunch yeah. to the roar. You're like, oh shit! You're like, it, but the mental toughness there, like that event was rough. That event was really rough for me. Um, but in the worst one for me was the jump rope. It was burpees. The thruster one like, with the burpees. Yes. I love every, that one. Every, every, every after. Thrusters, yeah, it was every the thrusters with burpees. Yeah. It was like front squat then. Um, thrusters and what was the other one? Uh, uh, squat cleans. No, it was a thruster, but after every thruster, you have to start from the ground. Thrusters, yes. Trust. And then in that, in between that, variation of burpees. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think, yeah. I, I remember that one. Like, that was, that, it was good, but yeah, you had to have some mental health there to get through those. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like those long workouts. But I mean, like, a lot of people, back to what we were talking about, like Mike said, you know, be like, all right, people come into the box, this box or any box, and they're like, ah, I'm gonna get in and kill, I'm gonna come in with, and crush my workout. You can't go in like that because you're gonna fuck up, I think. You have to go in with a positive mindset and not say, oh, I'm gonna crush the workout because you don't know how the workout's gonna hit you. Yeah. You know, I've, I've done mental fuck workouts and you know it, where it's a mind fuck where Oh my god, like the other day I programmed the workout, it was what, nine rounds, the five year anniversary? Yes, no, nine rounds. Uh, nine rounds, five I year anniversary of the box. Nine, nine it was 27 double unders or 27 unbroken single unders, five hang power cleans, nine rounds. Light, 105, 
and 75 or 85 for the girls. And I don't know, a couple people are like, oh, that looks rough. Oh my god, nine rounds, you're gonna kill us. Everybody finishes under 11 minutes. I gave them a 30 minute cut or a 25 minute cut. I, for me, I saw a dub, like, I was like, I remember I said it's in the chat, nine round dub, nice. That's what I said, because I love dub. I like yeah, but yeah. it's like exactly. a lot of people. Practice. But a lot of people yeah, were like, you know, yeah, you know, it's not like a big set. Where you're, Correct. Yeah. Once you do 50, you're like, oh, yeah. shit, I still got another 50 Exactly. More. But 27 you was not that you can pull them in one shot. Yeah, then you come back. Yeah. So. But people, a couple people were like, oh, that's rough. What are you doing to me? Like, yo, it's not that bad of a workout. But the one the day before, on Thursday, yeah, yeah. If they prepared themselves to fail. Yeah. Wow. And that's the thing too, either they're overconfident or they're over negative too. And you know, you have to have find that sweet in between spot that you okay, I gotta see, you gotta plan it, okay, you think about it, focus and go from there. Like like for example, me with ring muscle ups. It's like I see it in the water, I'm like, fuck. Okay, I'll do it anyways. Because yeah. if I don't do it, I'm failing. My I think my thing is is easy well not easy. How about, how about uh, less technical ones are, I think, the hardest, or the lighter ones. It's much more challenging to really push yourself to the limit versus just do the work on the regs. If, if there was, like, let's say, uh, I think I programmed the other day, it was a, uh, 21 thrusters, 400 meter run. It was three rounds, 95 pounds. Again. 21 thrusters, uh, 400 meter run. It's three rounds per time. So basically, like a, so almost you, like a Nancy. If you look at that, you're like, all right, like thrusters. If, if if you if you take your time on that workout, meaning like if you were just to jog outside and you have the mentality of, all right, I'm just going to finish this workout, then then it's going to be really yeah. an easy workout. But if you change that mentality and you really, or you're racing somebody, or you yeah. push yourself yeah, burn, yeah. to tell yourself, all right, I'm gonna finish this in under eight minutes or whatever, like you set that, yeah, you that goal, oh, yeah. then it's a whole different block. Yeah. It's it a whole different block. Yeah. So it it's it's all it's all what you create here, like you said. Like you walk in, you're like double unders, muscle ups, fuck, you know, and then it's already yeah, that's it, that's it. You're gonna have nine minutes of your fun. But if you come in, you're like, all right, like you said, I have an opportunity to practice my double unders, yeah. a good set, you know, the the thrusters, you know, I, I want to use a weight that I can go on broken on so I can fucking get the bar off my shoulders and run Correct. so that I do have that push or, you know, it's, it's setting yourself up for that. You have to, you have to understand what you want from it, not, not what it looks like on the board because yes. it looks, it looks different to everybody on the board. Yeah, right. I That's fucking I love muscle ups. I'll do muscle ups and burpees all day. Like, the, and nobody else will walk into the gym and say that. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. Like, I'm gonna do like Friday, I was watching a uh, YouTube, an old YouTube CrossFit video. It was that row challenge that they have between the row, the row black, red, you know. I think I remember something. And it was um, it was Rich, um, Jason, Sam Briggs. It was Rich and Jason. And <laughs> the, yeah, and uh, it was like three, four years ago. And at Sam Briggs and I think um, Tuli Fouché. And then on the other team, it was Josh Bridges, Dan Bailey, Camille, and Lauren Fisher. But they're t they're talking. Um, this guy from CrossFit Lynchman, he's a uh, Pat Sherwood, was talking. Uh, Paxson, not Paxson, the other one, Patrick. Patrick, Scott Patrick. Scott. He's like, oh, uh, Austin called, Austin Malaleo called. Oh, it's Scott Patrick and um, Ben Smith was on another team, on another road team, and he's talking to them on the phone and he's saying, oh, Austin called, I'm not going to tell you his reps, but he said that he, he did the squat clean wad and then did, and then he did the burpee box jumps and then he looked at it and he didn't know it was burpee box jumps and then squat cleans afterwards. And you hear Scott Pancic go, that's a totally different workout. It was supposed to be burpee box jumps first and then squat cleans. Right. 
you know, for a certain amount. Just inverting those two movements, it makes a big difference. It makes a big difference. Because, okay, you're, you're getting your heart rate with the burpee box jumps skyrocket. Now you're doing squat cleans, you know, which you could pace. But now you gotta do squat cleans first. Your legs are getting fatigued, and now you gotta jump up to a box. Yeah. You're, that's, you're done. Your legs are fried after that. But now they have to redo it. Lungs versus legs. Exactly. Versus legs versus but lungs. You should trade, you should train them both. Exactly. Honestly. It's like sometimes when you that's post an opportunity. Crazy, you're like you tell me, hey, what do you think of this workout? They're like, yeah. You're like, don't post it. What do you mean? Yeah, because people will see that and they will not come. I want people to come. Sure, so I think they'll be surprised when they come in. Because yeah, I think people prior like they see a workout and they're ready for failure. But that's and that's the thing. That's you know what where I mean? that, yeah, that, that mentality is. <laughs> right. You have to you have to understand that everybody sees that one differently. Yeah. Everybody sees it differently. Like for me, I see a lot of burpees. Like, all right, I see opportunity to, to, to work on what I'm doing. No, no, I mean to work on what I'm doing. I'm not eating this today. I'm not eating that today. Yeah. You I already mean, start checking things off the list. I mean, you work on weaknesses, and I, burpees is one of those things that you have to work on your engine. You have to work on your, your lungs and, and everything. So they see that, like, oh, I'm not going to go into that. Look, and they see an empty box. And it's because of that. They prefer look, to one thing I, I and did. And they're always going to be bad at it. Yeah. That's the shitty part. Like, exactly. like how come I never get better at it? Yeah. Well, you skip it. That's no, why, like, no. one day he did that, and then I, I brought this shirt in. I had a friend like make it just for that. And I told them, oh, but this, I told them this. Struggles. You know, embrace the suck. One race, thing I did. You, race, you know, you gotta work down the road. I took down the road. Feels good. And now I have, I just bought another one. Now we're doing a lot of rope pulls. So not only to build strength on our grip, but think about it, pulling. When we pull with clean snatches, or, or even with rowing, and, you know, pull-ups. Pull I mean, you know, even with the qualifiers, you the way you saw, like you saw that a lot of them didn't got stuck at the pull apart, and I'm like, okay, that's something that needs to work. But, but that's why they have to come in and work on those weak. And know, people don't want to do that type of work. So the rope isn't a bar; it's soft and it has grooves in it, and you have to grab it differently. Yes. So you're using your fingers and a lot more than just your hand. Yeah, right? exactly. So, but at the same time, I'm not telling people do this. I'm telling them hand over hand. I'm giving them specific instructions to do this so it engages their lats and everything. So the mindset of that is, okay, Greg's teaching me this. My mindset is, okay, their mindset should be, it's gonna make me better. All of the mental toughness, you know, mental toughness, mindset, you have to come in with a mindset like, I'm gonna perform to my best of my ability, but I'm gonna push myself, not just, oh, just another, another workout. And then you have some athletes, which I deal with here a couple of, there's like four or five of them, that you could tell them what to do, and they don't, they can't perform the movements, or, or it's a repetitive thing, like a broken disc, and it's like, what are you thinking? How are you able to focus? Their mind is out there, and they can't, and that's where they're gonna get hurt, not they mention. If your mind is out there, you're gonna end up getting it. If you're thinking about something else, if you're thinking about this fucking piece of shit right here, your mind, you know, your little iPhone, you know, and that's again. Once that again, we spoke that about what? One or two episodes ago? The phone yeah. being a distraction. Yeah, no, the bad, you know, it's, that's what it's your mindset is at. Focus. This is what your focus is at. This is like your we, mind. We've become a victim to that shit. Yeah. Like, you know, and I mean, when I used to do, you know, go to regular gym, I told you, do not call me. Yeah, not. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, because you told me, oh, pick a meal, pick a that, or I can get this. And I'm going to be thinking about that, and then I can't miss the weight, or I can't do this. I walk out, I, like five times, I had to walk out of the gym because I, I lost my focus. I told him, when this time, do not call me. Unless it's like somebody dying or an I want to do yeah. not call me. Call me after or text me, because I'll look at my phone after. Okay, after that. You know, like, well, you know. I, I already made the rule, if you're on your phone by the time I call the class, you're sitting up for the next class. I don't care for who it is. It could be her, him, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, but they just <laughs> oh no, I, I, people have <laughs> our, our mandatory day. You put a box. <laughs> I, I even have people take off their eyeballs. I take off my eyeballs. Yeah, yeah. I take it off. Yeah, yeah like, no, I'm, that's, another, that's another thing. Like, then, then he, I've seen like what he's talking, and people are like, but then people are like, oh, because I'm doing a track in my workout. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. you're not tracking shit right now. Yeah, and they're like, 
I think that overall, it's just that everybody needs to, to understand the mentality of, of why you're at the gym. Like, you know, it's, it's a cool social event, but you know, we have a purpose of being there. Right. Things can get done. It's just like going anywhere else. No, it's one distraction that somebody can mess up the entire floor. Yeah. But I think that if, if you can create that inside the gym, like where nobody has their phone and everybody's actually here talking to each other, and yeah. that's attractive. Yeah. And you go anywhere else, you walk into to, to any store and you see people sitting down at the same table and everybody's on their phone. They're not even engaging. Starbucks. They're not even looking at each other in the eyes. Starbucks. Probably they're in a, they're in a completely different world. They, they're, they're probably in like Africa because people are posting their vacation and they're like, oh wow, look at these pretty rocks and the trees. And, the rest and of the you, you have all these people in front of you to engage with and actually like, like communicate and have feelings and vibes and things like that. And all that's lost. Look like you're you're somewhere else. No, they're probably they're probably texting each other right across the table. Look like yesterday. What? I took my wife and my son down to Kilogo to smoke space like you to go watch the sunset at a little restaurant. Right. So everybody has a dinner table. No. No. Okay, good. No, <laughs> no. Like we'll take the pictures of our food, you know, the sunset, we'll take like pictures, whatever, what we're drinking, whatever. But most of the time we're just having conversations and enjoying the week just for just disconnect. And that's what people don't know. How to, I even actually one of my members I love her to death. Um, I, and I said it to the fact, who can survive in this world right now if an EMP was supposed to set on the, on the, on the world? Everybody's like, what's oh, EMP? I go, electric magnetic uh, box. That means that it cancels all electronic devices. I'm able to do it. Only like two people, three people were not able to. They're like, I, they will not be able to survive. I. If this didn't exist, even better for me, bro. Like I, like we've talked about it. I'll be like, if, if social media was around when we were kids, we would have been in prison a long time ago. So I mean, <laughs> but even like, like kids aren't even gonna know what a checkbook is. Yeah. I saw I, I, the, other, the other day I was at public. What do you mean a checkbook? And I saw a, a, an older lady writing a check, and, and a younger person was like standing in front of me. Yeah, and they were literally like staring at us. What are you doing? Like, why are you doing that? Your mom yesterday, I was sorry, right? <laughs> I still use I my checkbook. Yeah. 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 I still like, use my checkbook. Even, even the, the, the person at the register was laughing about it. They were like, wow, dude, I haven't like, rung up a check in such a long time. He was like, trying to put it in the computer. He's like, my I forget sister, what buttons to put in. She said, go to my grandma's every month and write all checks for me. She still sends the check. I still. Like, through the mail. Through the mail. <laughs> yeah, she still sends checks through the mail. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. order, really? she, buys, she buys every month like $10 of the stamps. So whatever yeah. it costs yeah. yeah. out of there. Yeah. I even downloaded the other day a, a fax app because I had to fax something to a bank. Oh, there's an app? Yeah, there's, there's an app. There's All I had to do was take a picture of the, yeah. of the thing and <laughs> yeah, it dialed up and it, it sent me a confirmation and everything. Yeah. A lot of people really? use that like nurses, whatever they do before you go and they scan the thing. Oh, I have no yeah. idea. But I mean, like, but see how, how everybody, their mindset is towards electronic devices. And I mean, like, in life, that's in life, you know, work. But uh, the other day I was watching a podcast from Ben Bergeron, and he's like, emails were not meant to be communicating and talking about how your social life is. It was just meant for business propositions, uh, uh, yep. for business purposes. Not communication. Yes, yes, yeah, for business. Nothing. I don't know if you saw it. No. And not for you know. Hey, how you been, dude? Like that's what that's what it, what happens when everybody abuses things, and it's getting worse. You know, and, you know the mindset. You know, we're all, our mindset is just getting to the point where we don't want to do anything or we're on the road to failing and you know it, it, it's not right you know and I don't know if it's social media I don't know if it's society I don't know if it's TV music I think uh, well I think it's a little bit of you know everything has to do with 
how we're growing as, as a society. And, you know. Yeah, I think we're, like I said, I think we're fixed to technology, man. Yeah. And, and we're losing our our actual ground. Like, we're not here anymore, man. We're Maybe in socially. Space, yeah. dude. Yeah, like, we don't drive anymore. You drive place. But you get to your location, you didn't see anything around you. You were fucking looking at your phone all the time. I you know, can't like, do that. Dude, it's crazy. I, I watch it. I literally watch some yeah. people. Oh, yeah. Driving ice cream, driving See, the whole time like this. The whole time. See, I've seen people but, watching a movie. But it's watching funny. Watching a movie But it's funny phone. because we test, and then if I'm driving, I call him. He never picks up. No, I don't pick my phone for anybody. Yeah. My mom will be my ass because I don't pick up her phone. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't pick up. I don't know. Because I don't like I, I'd rather converse and after ten after like after ten text going back and forth like dude now like hello. Yeah, yeah. no, I don't know. I would rather talk. I would rather talk. I would rather talk. It just gets annoying as me. Like just call me bro, like hello. Yeah, alright. I'd rather talk quick. than text. Yeah. Because one the texts are quick, but it's like you can speak in more detail or yeah. or speak with more emphasis or or even like more passion. Text message, I might not respond until midnight. You don't care. There's two or three days that you say. For example, when I have to like, me, me and my wife and my kids were on vacation, like, we leave everything. Like, all technology, like my phone, now. I don't even. I disconnect from everything. Oh, you don't take it at all? I take it, but I leave it at the house. Like, at my I know the house. And I'm out. Like, I don't, I'm not even taking Like, she's the one more taking pictures with a regular phone, a regular camera. Or something, but my kids don't have the tablet on with them. They're out playing in the street with other kids. In Columbus? Yeah. Like, there's no shoes on. They're just playing soccer. And oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, over there, like, everybody's there watching. All the parents are there outside with their kids, talking to the neighbors. You don't see that people on social media like, you know, the time. Oh, for real? Yeah. Like, it's more young kids now, but everybody's out. Everybody, you know, everybody knows each other. Hey, whatever. They say hi to everybody. And it's my dad, uh, well, back, my dad goes, hey, can you fix the YouTube for me? I go, what do you mean YouTube? You got TV? You don't know, I just like watching a couple things on YouTube. My dad's 88 years old. I'm fixing the YouTube, opening a YouTube account for my 88 years old. You can tell he's old because that's YouTube. Yeah. You can tell he's old because that's YouTube. Yeah, he makes the YouTube. Uh, and I'm like, here, yeah, okay, so now he watches a show, a couple shows, like sports or whatever on YouTube. So, and the news, depending. And it's like, okay, that's cute, you know. There's certain things that you can you can't watch on regular TV that you can watch on YouTube. And there's he loves baseball. My dad loves baseball. So if you give him anything baseball related and he can watch it over different episodes on YouTube or anything, that's it. That's it. Or guns. Yeah. Or guns. Like that guy. YouTube is cool. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. You know, and you can become a doctor on YouTube. Yeah. Pretty much. Well, your brother became a phone tech. Yeah, yeah, he picked yeah. my phone screen the other day, two days ago. Go, grab your YouTube video. Yeah. Yeah. And he was when I do something my like, I've never done it before. Let me Tell my dad I can do it. Oh, all right, all right, let's do it. And but look, look for example, that's mindset. You, if you're tech savvy, you have a mindset for that technology, technological stuff. Me, like my mindset is changing people's lives, getting them fit. Same thing with you. Writing. Paper pen. It's a habit. Yeah. Yes. I can. I can. I would rather write things on a notebook and put them in a computer. Or or or, or, uh, or then like uh, uh, oh, I'll take notes here and there because I'm not gonna take notes in everywhere. And, but look, when I did my level one, I took my notebook and I took notes. And I'm like, it felt weird. And I was like, I'm big like, fat. And you see people taking notes, and I'm like, oh shit. And you see some people with their iPads. So it, it shows, or with the laptop, it's two different mindsets, the younger community, and you can tell there was the younger, the people under 30 that were doing the computer thing, and then the people over 30, 35 that were doing... Yeah, because they also have software that translates words to... No, but that's your but that's the thing, I don't know that. I, I'd rather just write, and because what I've learned is, as they're explaining, and you're writing, you're doing like double learning. Yes, correct. You know, you're, you're, both, you're like... Um, what's it called, like, uh, re-introducing the, the movement or whatever. Exactly. Well, if you're typing, I mean, I guess it's the same thing, but for me, because I'm not used to that. No, because if you're writing, I mean, if you're writing, you actually 
you can do the diagram of movement. Yeah, you can exactly. You do like a little figure. Okay, this is that versus this. Yeah, and you don't have a okay. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like more. That's a visual. Like I'm more practical. practical right? more practical. I, yeah, that's how I. You have to like draw it out and then yeah. 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 It's more practical. Correct. So I'm like that's I, I, you know, and I'm a I'm a visual learner. I'm a visual and practical learner. When it comes to like studying, I'm not your study material, but I will do it. It'll break my head. I'm, I don't know how you were. Well, no, you I you used to fall asleep, right? With the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to work for online university, and I tried to go back to school three times in my career. Yeah. And that's the thing. I'm used to old school setting. I need a teacher, and now I have questions. I can't be just reading something. Oh, what's the form? What's the question? Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have no patience for that. Just read this. Yeah, I, I can't. Just take the practice for whatever. Yeah. I, I can't do that. I need somebody, like I need the one-on-one -on -one or whatever the group and everybody talks and interact. So, hey, okay. so how are we going to, so to end like our conversation about mindset and mental toughness, I mean, how can we say, um, talk about how, what, how people should come to the gym and have a mindset or if they get rattled, through a workout, how can they stick to that mental toughness? My 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 thing is that I mean even even I'm, I need everybody to practice this. I need to practice it myself. But my thing is that we need to analyze it, like what we're saying. Like we need to really take ten to fifteen minutes to just sit down and realize why I'm going to the gym today. Why am I going to the gym today? What am I going to do with the gym today? How is it going to make me better? If it's not going to make me better, then I'm not going to go, right? Then why do you do it? Don't even do it. Go do something else that you think is going to make you better. If you think that, you know, driving your car 500 miles an hour down the street is going to make you better, then, then that's what you, you need to do. But, but you need to have your, your mindset in that direction. Because if you're not there, you're not there. You can't do it. But at the same time, you also have, you get rattled. You got to have so that you, mental toughness. But, that, but that, comes with, that comes with you being prepared. Because yeah. you know now, all right, it took 10 minutes. I'm going to the gym. I suck at muscle ups. I'm gonna have to do them today or practice them today. So maybe I go five minutes early, start my warm up differently than the class because I wanna I wanna actually get a good muscle court. up today. Whatever it is, but it's 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 a it's a better game plan. It's 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 more productive and, and you feel more successful at the end of that than skipping something. Correct. Right. You missed out on I it. Had a, You're never gonna get better at it if you don't face it. That's that's that's. I true. had a gymnastics class a couple weeks ago, okay. teaching people toaster bar pull-ups, progressions, basic progressions. Think like, in total of four classes, like six people showed up. Out of sixty people, that's what one one percent, ten percent, ten percent of the box showed up. I wasn't upset, but it showed me. How intimidated people are by doing pull-ups and toasting. Two basic movements. I mean, not basic, but they're important movements. Important yeah. movements. And the thing is, when you ask who wants to get pull-ups and toaster bar, all 60 of them raise their hands. But when That's it's time to do the work, 10%. 10 yeah. go. And they're like, no, I had a last-minute thing. No, both of you didn't want to fucking come do it. What? Everybody has a last minute thing. Everybody has a last minute thing. <laughs> and then it sucks because now you're not wasting my time, but it's like I'm sitting down programming for every individual in the box to get better. But that showed me where the mindset is. My mindset is, hey, I'm going to get you guys better. But their mindset is I'm not going to come in because this is too hard for me. I can't do it. Of course you can do it because you don't practice it. You, you, you're not learning it yet. You know, if they already think that, then they didn't have the right mentality when they signed up for the gym. Like, I'm not going to go and sign up for a baking class and expect to learn how to paint. Dude, I got, I got a it guy, doesn't, doesn't work Joel, that weighs almost 300 pounds. Yeah, I think he weighs like 260. That motherfucker. He's one of my fat boy leads. That's what they call it. They, that's what they call the, the little, that little fat, boy yeah, that boy fat boy lead. Fat boy lead. 
because they push weight, but they can move for their size. Yeah. Vic is one of them. His brother, John, Joel, and I think Alexis is the new kid. And he bought bands on his own because he broke some of already. So <laughs> he's like, he gave me the money for it, and then I bought new ones, and he bought some for himself. And he'll do bad. He'll do bad. He comes in here and does gymnastics. And to see somebody at that weight, at that size, doing pull-ups, even though it's banded, it's impressive. His brother, at 400 pounds, doing toes to bar, knee raises, hanging knee raises. That's the mindset that he has, that he wants to get down to 200 pounds, ripped, looking sexy, and looking good naked. Yeah. That's his mindset. He goes, I want to look like Jeff Cook, or whatever his name is. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, so that is like his mindset, that is his, his visualization, what he wants to look like. And I tell him, let's do it. You know, and you know, I love that type of stuff, you know. And I have girls from the box and I have, I've had other girls like, DM me, oh, how much you can charge for the prices because I want to look like this. Bro, you tell me what you want to look like and I'll make you look like that. Because it's not on how you're... It's not like, oh, not bodybuilding. You want legs? We're going to squat a lot. We're going to do a lot of lunges. We're going to do a lot of sleds. But once again, we talked about genetics and, you know, a couple of weeks ago and, oh, I don't want to get bulky. Some of these girls don't care. They want to lift. Yeah. They want to lift. They want to get strong. So that's their mindset. But then I have girls that, oh, I don't want to get bulky. That's their mindset. Then why are you, why are you going to the regular gym? That's going to get you bulky. Why are you out drinking? That's your mindset. Or eating fast food and that's going to get you bulky. Not this. So, like, a lot of people's mindsets and, you know, ideals are different. You know, like, we spoke a couple weeks ago, last one of our last training sessions, we talked about, I go, bro, it, you know, sometimes, like, I cry or get frustrated. You know, my goal is to make the CrossFit game. I don't even make the CrossFit game. I want to win the CrossFit game. I want to be able to own it in my age division. Whether it's first, second, or third, I don't care. I made it. I'm not a lot of people. But what did I tell you? That you're like, you're right. Uh, imagine all this work that I'm doing and I don't get, ever get to go. Think about all the athletes that are putting all the work, spending thousands of dollars, and don't get to work. I'm, I haven't made the CrossFit games and I have sponsors which I represent, which I'm grateful for them. But at the same time, it's like, am I good enough? You know, uh, I'm looking at my lips and I'm, some of my lips are good enough. That's what my mindset is. It's like, okay, my left, my, some of my left lips are world-class athlete lips for somebody my age and my, and my weight and some of my movements, but it's like, what else do I have to do to get to the next level? What else do I need? My mindset is like still there. My focus is still there. My visualization is still there. I don't give up, but it's like it's a kink in the armor, but I keep fighting and I keep fighting and I'm like, how much more do I got to push? And I keep grinding. And something that I learned is the more you grind, the better you're going to get and, and the tougher you're going to get. And that's what I try to teach everybody. It's like, don't let anything bother you. It's like, I've, I've been at this now for seven, seven and a half years doing CrossFit, for the whole CrossFit Games thing, seven years, six, six and a half, seven years. And I haven't stopped. And, and you look at my rankings, they keep on getting better. My last year that I, I finished top 500 in the world in 40 to 44, I'm in the 45 through 49. My mindset is making top 200 this year. Nothing less. If I don't make nothing less, it's either I didn't, I did something wrong, or I was sick, or something really rattled me. But I'm going, I'm full speed ahead. I haven't stopped. And you know, and I thank this guy right here. You know, he's been there for me for the last seven years, and he believes in me, and you, and my wife, and everybody. And I just don't stop. And that's my mindset. My, and you know, I've had issues where injuries, you know, health, you know, heart attack, and I don't stop. Adapt and overcome mental, you know, a lot, a lot mental toughness and shit. I got discharged from the hospital last year when I got my heart attack. On a Friday, Monday, I was working out. 
then that shows you. People are like, bro, you just got a heart attack. What are you doing? I'm working out. That's my mindset. It's like, don't stop. Don't stop. You know, people are like, oh, my elbow hurts. Okay, don't stop. Keep going. Just adapt to something else. Adapt and overcome. You know? Anything else? Well, like for me, I know that um, like now that I'm, you know, focusing more on you know training and like all right, I want to compete, but I want to get better, so I don't want to do, I don't want to get stuck, get, get stuck in one division. So you know, okay, I, and I ask people, what do I need to do to you know to go up? I don't want to keep doing beginners or scales or whatever. But like, um, so yeah, like you have to work on your weaknesses. You have to have that mental toughness, that focus to get through it. And keep going. Yeah. Next thing up, we're going to talk about is the Water Palooza qualifiers. Three weeks, six workouts, and they were rough. Back to mindset. These were tough workouts. These workouts were tough, especially workout two that had the devil press. Wow, that 50 pound devil presses was rough. I got to finish, I think, with two or three devil presses at the end. That, that workout really took a lot out of me. I don't know if you tried it at all. I wasn't able to do them actually, but I know that that devil press is a very hard range of motion. Yeah. And I don't know. And after your shoulders are fried in the other motions before that, toes to bar, oh, chest three, yeah. the chest to bar, pull yeah. up, you're like, I don't have nothing else to do. And you have nothing. And double snatches, I think one five was a fun one, which was thrusters. Which one was the... Four. That was four. Three or four. That one was fun. Yeah. That was pretty good. That was Yeah, fun. but I think at the end, I, my hands were like this. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't... Uh, I wasn't even hurting from that one. My work... That... It was the, the double press one. And then... The other one was... Uh, the thrusters with the burpees. With the calorie row and the yeah, burpees over the row. And I'm going to tell you right now. If you're doing burpees over bar, bar hopping burpees, and burpees over the rower, two different yeah. animals. Because now you're only jumping higher for a little bit wider. It's two different animals. Um, and then to, and that was great battery work. Because you followed it up with, uh, what right back to painting this? You know, it, it was rough, but. Or not even that, it was uh, also 150 wall balls. And the 150 wall balls and 100 post to bar. Would you collapse? Yeah. How did that go? It was funny. It was funny. <laughs> did, you first, did your rep keep change or you kept the same rep keep? No, I, I had to. I kind of went. You were rapping. No. No. He literally rapped. No. I think I did the first 50 of both. That's what he said. He collapsed like tilted. Scale. Scale. Bah! And he the video of my life, I'll yeah. show you yeah. after. Because I pressed it, I forgot to, I had to press it again to stop recording. And it, we, you see the whole ass service. And I see the face, and me and Bruce are just like. I walked down, threw up, dried me, whatever. I sat on that mat outside like this on the floor, like, oh my god. She, she had to take my shoes off, the knee wraps, the knee sleeves. Like, and he's then. Like, Tilton helped me up, I get closer, he's in. Yeah, I don't even remember, like, like, I just don't know, I was yeah. out of it. Help me already walk out of that. Okay, I guess you're it, it was a bad word, like, I liked it, but that was probably one of the worst workouts I've ever done, like, but the worst. You didn't have anywhere to go. It was like, all right, I'm going to do, back and forth. yeah, I'm going to do these ball balls until, you know, I feel like I'm going to stop, and then I'm going to do fucking toes the bar, and then once I get to the toes the bar, I still have more wall balls. Yeah. Really. I, I did, like, I think it was, like, 50 wall balls before I broke it up, and then I think I did, like, 15 or 20 toes the bar. Then I did as many, with, like, 10 or 15, and then broke it up accordingly. I think I finished the wall wall balls first and then finish because I noticed that the if I would have finished wall close to bar first it would have affected my strain on my wall balls if I would have finished close to bar first it would have because of the little hip flexion mm -hmm. so I'm like let me just finish the wall balls as fast as I can and I think I finished in what 11.54 or something like that or 10.54 yeah for scale it was like it was regular butterfly uh, with, with the uh, medicine ball yeah and then the 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 one with the clean injured five and six. She took a video of me. 
you put on the story, I did not blink. After I was just laying there, I was like, wow. That was, huh? Made her cry. That's the first time I've seen a wad make her cry. Yeah. They made her cry. It was one of those wads where either you're dead or you got an emotional breakdown. My he got pissed. But yeah, I was pissed. Because he, he just got back from Atlanta. So. So I had like stuff. I was it was horrible, and I like I stopped like you gotta keep on trying. No, what was it? Yeah, Mentally, I was like I know. You come in knowing that you were fucking yes. eating bad. Well, I wasn't eating bad. Exactly. Like, like, like a bad. I didn't person. train. I didn't train at all. So that's the thing. So once if you stop doing it for a couple of days, you make up some crap. Okay. Your mic can go now. You know. And like, I knew I was gonna suck, but okay. Here's your proof. But yeah, you, but you I thought you can't really get out of shape in three days. Five days. Five. days. Come on, that's like saying I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna, I'm but gonna you know, Yeah, but you gotta go Saturday, Sunday, and then that's come right. back on. The it was nine days that nine, yeah. ten days that he missed. Yeah, so that kind of. And then he was staying in a hotel, so I know he wasn't eating healthy, not sleeping right. And you know how when you miss those, that all plays a role. Mindset. Yeah, it all plays a role, dude. And I was, I was, and he was like, are you? Triggers things in your brain. Yeah, like you okay? No, I'm like, I'm like, I was, my brother was rushing, and I was walking back like I'm fucking pissed. And then during the water or after? After, after, after. And then, and then. So you can't do that shit during the water. No, no, no. And, and then right after. after <laughs> get that shit done. And, and then, then right after, that's what I do. I clap. Because the drilling just went away. <laughs> that was it. That was it. I just said, no, no, no. Okay, now I'm fine. <laughs> but I was like walking, like pacing back and forth, like pissed. Yeah. I was like, angry that I sucked. I could But uh, I think the best one for me was the first one, which was uh, Snatch, <laughs> Overhead Squad, and Double. I love that one. We went at it against each other and that was fun, yeah, that yeah. was a lot of fun. Uh, I also want to say congratulations to all the qualifiers in South Florida, especially from my box. We have seven people getting the invite. Seven, right? Over seven. Race, yeah. Um, Do you know the, 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 the amount of athletes? I don't know, but last year I sold out in seven seconds. I know, I know, because I'm part of the Facebook forum community for Wild Blues, and they took up two spots for each division, I guess. Because the previous winners, they for, him, like, like, for him, for the actual, you know, CrossFit Games winners. Yeah, the game, the one to one, they yeah. get those free invites uh, directly. But you don't know, like, I think it's like 20, 20 for each division. Wow. Yeah. Well, for the, like, I think it's for the even and, and for me, it's like 20. Like, well, when Joey was doing that, I think it was we like had the, 60 people. No, we did, when I did it, I was third to last, so it was 140, 150 something people. We had 150 people. I was 100, I finished 147. Well, 146. And that year for scale was like what, 35? And beginning of the No, I'm talking about that year, but that was open entry right back then, remember? Yeah. Oh, okay. So there was no qualifiers? Uh, no, no, no. There was only qualifiers for RX and Elite. Okay. There was only qualifiers for RX and Elite, remember? And that was the first year that they introduced him to me. That was what, 16 then? 2015. 2014. No, not really. Yes. 2014 had RX and Elite qualified, uh, and that was the first year they introduced. Then I had, then I did the 13 with the wall walk. Yeah, but I that was my first year at scale. Yeah, but I know the next year after that I started. It was a qualifier for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2015 had a qualifier for everybody, and then I also want to thank. Uh, Everyone, last week we did our little remodeling in the box. We pressure washed the floors, the mats. We remodeled the box. I want to say thank you to everybody that took their time this Saturday last weekend to help uh, clean the box and remodel it. You know, we had pizza, we had a couple beers here. We had a blast. I mean, we turned a, a working situation into a fun day. So that's basically what it is, guys. I appreciate it, you know, the box it even looks bigger, people walked in on Monday and they're like, wow, it, it's the same 1500 square feet, I just made it bigger by moving everything back and just opening up more space. Now we have more space and more fun to play with, hopefully more, more equipment gets to come in, we get to get more toys and play outside more often. That was a work I asked. So, yeah, that was nice. Nice. Uh, yeah. I was walking in with a paint overhead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we pressure watch the fleet. We pressure watch the fleet. Yeah. Uh, guys, this is Greg the Devil Dog with BK Comic Coach and Justin the Tech Garcia. Go work out. From talking shit about fitness, go work out. Get fit, eat right, eat clean. 
have fun. Mental toughness. Embrace the suck. Embrace the suck. Mental toughness. Uh, mind, have a tough mindset. And also, positive visualization. You gotta visualize what you wanna do, what you wanna look like, alright? This is not about, oh, I wanna come to the gym and do this. No, you gotta visualize what you want. Your goal is an opportunity to become a better version of yourself. Guys, have an amazing day. Take care.